Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's quick sensor tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the KY037 with the Raspberry Pi in Python. I'll be showing you the physical setup and the code setup, and by the end of it, we will have a script that will use the digital output from the KY037 to tell us whether we are registering a sound or not. And I'll be showing you a tip I use to get this device to work because actually the reason I'm making this video is because I found the potentiometer on the device really finicky and it took me a while to get it to work. So I'll be showing you that as well. And by the end of it, hopefully we can get this thing working and registering sound from the digital outputs in Python. So enough being said guys, I don't want to waste any of your time. Before we get into it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel because we will be doing a part two and three for this tutorial where we will be building upon the things we learned today and give you more useful information for the sensor and in the IoT space, guys. So enough being said, let's jump into it. Okay, so first things first, very simple. As you could see here, this is the first thing diagram to be able to work with the code we're about to run today. So just take three jumper wires and connect them exactly as you see in this diagram, ground to ground on the Raspberry Pi, followed by the five volt pin on the Raspberry Pi connected to the power pin, that is the plus pin on the KY037. And then finally on the seven pin there in blue on the Raspberry Pi, we'll be connecting that to the digital output pin on the KY037 because we will only be using digital output for today's tutorial. In a future video, I'll be showing you the analog output, but for today, we'll be using the digital output, which will tell us whether a certain threshold of sound has been reached. That is, it will be able to register a zero value if it has not detected anything and a one value. So that's pretty much it for the physical setup. Make sure it is plugged into power. And if you did everything properly, you should see this device light up because it does have a red LED on it. So if you did that, you're pretty much good to go. And let's jump into the code side of things to show you the code will be running today on the Raspberry Pi and explain that tip I was talking about to actually get the digital output to work properly. Okay, so jumping to the Python side of things, you see I have the script here in front of me. Now I'm using my local computer to actually code directly on the Raspberry Pi using Visual Studio Code via the SSH protocol. I've talked about this on previous tutorials. Instead, if you're not familiar with this, you can simply write a Python script on your Raspberry Pi and copy the content directly as you see here. You do not have to code from your local computer. I know this can be a little overwhelming for some beginners. If you are interested for coding from your local computer onto Raspberry Pi, I have a tutorial which I show you how to use SSH to actually be able to do that and I will link that right here. Nonetheless, we have the whole Python script that we will be using today to interact with the KY037 in Python on the Raspberry Pi. Very simple script and we're just using the GPIO library in Python as you can see here. And if you do not have this library ready, it should come with the Python on the Raspberry Pi. I'm pretty sure it does. If not, you could just run this command. I have this on my blog, which I will link down in the description below, and that should get you the library in Python. Once you have that library, you just want to import it along with time. Now you do not necessarily have to use time. I do not believe I'm using it in this script, but you can use time to change the, the sleep value. So you could use time.sleep to register sound at certain intervals. I am just registering sound continuously in this while loop. So let me go ahead and comment that out so I do not confuse you guys. You do not need this time library unless you want to put gaps between the times of registering the sound. Next thing we have here is we're just setting the mode and we're just doing the setup for the pin. So that is the GPIO4 pin on the Raspberry Pi. So that is the seven pin on the Pi. So it's GPIO4, but it's also technically the seven pin on the Pi, which is where we connected that blue jumper wire. And so we're just setting that up to be able to register sound on that pin. And we have a very simple function as you can see here. So this sound detected in the function will just tell us whether we read a zero or a one value from that digital output. So zero once again is no sound is detected and one is sound is detected. And finally, if sound is detected, we will print sound is detected. Otherwise we'll print it no sound is detected. Finally, in this main program loop, we will try to continuously run that function, which is all we are doing. And yeah, so let's go ahead and run this and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that tip. So let's go ahead and run this code here. So Python KY037 test.py. You can see right now, no sound is detected. So that means this sound detected is zero. But when I first actually got the device, this was always sound detected. And it took me a long time to actually get it to change from sound detected to no sound detected. So it was incredibly frustrating. And what you actually have to do is looking at this diagram right here, you see this device actually has a potentiometer on it, which you are familiar with probably up to this point if you are watching this tutorial. And this allows you to increase or decrease the sensitivity of the sound measurements for the digital output. So if you do turn it counterclockwise, that should reduce the sensitivity. And I actually had to turn this thing about a hundred times 
counterclockwise for this to change from a one value to a zero value. So be very patient. And the way I was able to turn this device is actually I used a little knife here, as you can see, and I was just sticking it into the KY037 because that is the thinnest thing I had. And you just want to keep twisting it. So right now, if I twist it clockwise, which actually increases the sensitivity, I should eventually see that sound was detected. So let's go ahead and do that. So keep twisting it clockwise. So we see that finally sound is detected. And now I'm going to twist it counterclockwise. So you see I'm twisting it counterclockwise and eventually no sound is detected. Now to get to this certain threshold, it took me about a hundred spins. So once again, I want to iterate that you have to be very patient with these guys because I almost gave up on them. I ordered five of them and I thought all of them were broken. That is not the case. These things just come hypersensitive out of the factory. So I hope you got to this point. I hope you were able to run your Python script and you were able to get to this threshold where you finally see that this digital output for the KY037 works as expected and you got everything working for you. So there you have it for today's video, everyone. As you saw, we were able to use the digital output signal from the KY037 with the Raspberry Pi in Python successfully. If you got it to work or if you learned something new, please consider liking or subscribing to the channel. It would mean a lot to me. Even better than that, consider donating to the channel in the donate link down below to further support our content on this channel because without your support, I cannot continue to make more videos. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.